your perceptual structures are determined by the goals that you have at hand. I mean, some of that's, that's not completely true because your perceptual systems also have limitations, right? There's things you can't see or hear even if you need to. So there are limitations built in. But within that set of limitations, you're still trying to tune your perceptions to your motivated goals. And that's also very useful to think about when you're trying to understand artificial intelligence because for human beings, without goals, there's no perception. Because there's no filtering mechanism that you can use to determine the level of resolution at which you perceive. Anyway, so there's, the, there's a thing made of smaller things which are made out of smaller things. And it's, so, it's kind of my iconic representation of the complexity of the world. And then you could think, well, what is this? How can you see this object? And I think if you just look at it, you can detect, it's like a Necker cube, you know those cubes that that are line drawings that you can see the front of and then it'll flip to the back. Have you seen those? So this is kind of Necker cube like, or at least it is for me in that when I look at it, my perceptions play around with it. Sometimes I focus on the kind of cross like shape in the middle. And sometimes I can see these other lines. And then sometimes I'll focus on that square. And sometimes I can see the little dots there, or maybe one dot and my perceptions are going like this, trying to fit a pattern to it. And I, you can kind of detect that when you're watching it. And so I would say, well, you have the options of perceiving this in its full complexity, or you can simplify it. Essentially, there's lots of ways you can simplify it, but some of them are laid out there. So you take the compl complex thing, you make a low resolution representation of it. So that's its rough, that's the rough area that all those dots occupy. That's the rough area bro broken down to its four most fundamental quadrants. That might be how you would look at it if, if this was a map of an orchard and you were trying to walk from south to north, that would be a useful representation. This combines this and this. That's, <clears throat> the <clears throat> that's the highest level of resolution that you can perceive this object at that's lower resolution than the object itself. So the first issue is how should you look at things? Well, that's a problem that intelligence has to solve. So that's one of the problems that intelligence goes after. And then I think what happens is we have the thing in itself and then we simplify it with a perception and, and that's like a, an iconic representation. And then we, we nail the iconic representation with a word. And that's how we compress the world's complexity into something that we can manage. We take the complex thing, make it into an icon and represent the icon with a word. And then when I throw you the word, so to speak, you decompose it into the icon and then decompose it even further into the thing. If you can't, if you know the icon and you know the thing. And so then we can use shorthand, right? Because you have representational structures and so do I, and I'm just tossing you markers about your representational structures and you can unfold them. That's what you do when you're reading a novel because the novel comes alive in your imagination in your own idiosyncratic way. And it wouldn't if you didn't understand the references of the novel, right? The, the novelist has to assume that your basic perceptual structures and your intuitions and your instincts are basically the same as his or hers, because otherwise they have to assume that because otherwise they would be lost in an infinite regressive explanation. So, and it, it's problematic often, for example, if you start reading Victorian novels, you may find that it takes a while to get into them because the presuppositions, the expectations are slightly different and so is the language. You have to update the representations.